Thanks for coming, guys. Um, this is exciting for me. Um, I've grown up in Santa Cruz most of my life, um, and I have always wanted to do something like this. And we've only been open for two weeks, so the fact that you guys are here and getting to experience this is pretty exciting to me. Um, when Matt asked me to, to be a part of this, I he was like, sure, but what, what am I talking about? And he said, I just want to kind of hear what your vision is and why you do what you do. It's about entrepreneurs in the extreme sports world, and we want to hear about your mindset and why you guys do it. And I thought it was funny because, I mean, I can talk about that for hours, but I was uh, thumbing through Facebook today, and I read this, and it actually answered that question. Uh, somebody posted this, one of my buddies. It says, normal is getting dressed in clothes that you buy for work and driving through traffic in a car that you are still paying for in order to get to the job you need to pay for the clothes and the car and the house you leave vacant all day so you can afford to live in it. And so I was doing that. You know, I, 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 my background before doing this, I played minor league baseball. I played, I played baseball for 20 years. And the last three was in the Toronto Blue Jays organization. And baseball is something I was very passionate about. It's, it's what how Kyle and Tyler feel about surfing. Um, I think the cool thing about surfing is once you're done, you know, you can still do it. Whereas with baseball, unless I go play in like a men's league or something like that, I'm, I'm done. And so um, I was living a few years um, commuting over the hill, doing exactly what I just read. Uh, at my parents' business over in San Jose, they own a manufacturing business. In fact, they built a lot of the metal that you see in here today. Um, but it wasn't something that I was all that passionate about. Um, you know, when I was playing, that's all I ever wanted to do. And I never thought about what I was going to do with my life once it all ended. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd take long bus rides. Like, you hear about that, and we that's what you do. In the minor leagues, you take long bus rides. And it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I remember laying there thinking, like, you know, what if this doesn't work out? What am I going to do? And I was like, I, I don't even think about that right now. I'm still playing. So it ended. It ended in uh, Memorial Day weekend of 2005. I, I, I hung him up. I quit. I, um, and and it, that was the moment where I was like, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. So we drove back from Michigan, which was where I was playing at the time, and um, – we got back on like a Friday or a Saturday, and my dad said that he wanted me at work on Monday at his place. So I was doing that, like I said, for about two years, and then I had an older brother, my oldest brother. I, I had two older brothers, and I have a younger sister. Um, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. Um, he had a grade four glioblastoma, which coincidentally um, my wife's father had um, seven years prior to that. He actually survived, but we, we were very familiar with the disease, and we knew that his survival rate wasn't very high. Um, so he battled, he battled brain cancer for a little less than a year, and he passed away on May 5th of 2007. He was 30 years old. He had a beautiful wife, and he left behind three awesome boys. And um, that's when it, I realized that I was living a life that was missing passion. It was missing everything that I was, that I was before I quit baseball. And so I decided I was going to get into training. And I had trained my whole life. I mean, that's what you do when you play sports. You train. Tyler does it all the time. Kyle did it yesterday with us. Um, and, and it was something I liked a lot. It was something I really enjoyed. Um, so I, I got a job working part-time doing front desk work at Google. Um, one of my best friend's brothers was working there, and this was in 2007 when Google, I think that's the highest Google stock had ever been was in 2007. Um, and so it was like the place to be, and it was like, wow, what a cool, what a cool opportunity. So I started doing that, and uh, I was picking up people's towels and cleaning up the locker rooms and greeting people at the front desk, and I was working full-time for my dad and going to school, and it was a lot of work. Um, I eventually got certified, and then I think it was 2010, um, I decided I was going to stop working in Santa Cruz. I was going to stop doing what I just read and work and live in Santa Cruz. Um, so that's what I did. So I met Rocky Snyder, who most of you probably know because he's like a celebrity in Santa Cruz, and um, I trained out of his facility for the last four and a half years and built some relationships, met some cool people, um, and this is now what we have, and I'm like be over the moon excited about it. I'm pretty nervous. I'm scared. Um, I'm all of those things. This is a, a big deal for us, and uh, we want people to know about it and to get the word out. And But at the end of the day, like, I believe in it, and I knew that if I was going to do this, I was going to do it my way. I was going to do it the way I thought it needed to be done, and, um, you know, a lot of people told me I was crazy. Um, you know, you talk about entrepreneurs. Um, somebody that I admire a lot is, he's become a friend of mine, is Ryan O'Donovan, who's one of the owners of Verve. And I'm just impressed by what they've done, especially in Santa Cruz with their business. And when we would train, we would talk about business all the time. And I would I talked about this project for like three years. It was probably annoying to a lot of people. Um, and I talked to him about it a lot. And, and he and I asked him for his advice. And he said, "Don't compromise your vision. You know, people are going to tell you you're crazy. 
and, and maybe they're right. But at the end of the day, like, you have to be okay with the decision you made. So, you know, this turf that we're standing on, you guys are all sitting on, like, that was a decision that we made that most people advise against. And the ball's there and the wall there and, like, so everything. Everything that we, we have in here is well thought out and um, we're excited about it. Um, so a little bit about our business. We, we work with a lot of athletes. Like I said earlier, Kyle was in here yesterday with Nat and a few of his other friends. And um, Tyler's been in here a few times. So we, we cater to the more elite athlete, but we also work with general fitness clients. Um, that's what those brochures are. So we offer 39 group classes a week. Um, we have four different types of classes that we offer. Uh, one is more of a strength focus. Behind me, we have um, four Olympic platforms. Um, we have four squat racks with safety squat bars. I mean, we have a lot of weight in here, so we focus a lot on strength. In order to do what these guys do, they need to be strong. So we, that's part of what we do. It's part of what we focus on. Um, another thing that we work on is endurance. Um, you know, when, when Tyler's at Mavericks, like, he needs to be in shape. Um, he's going to get held down. He's, there's a lot of stuff that happens. And, um, and so we, we do an endurance class. Um, so we mix in the bikes, the rowers that you ladies were having so much fun on earlier. Um, so we do a lot of stuff with that. Um, and then we have a regeneration class. Um, you know, our, our, th our theory, our methodology, and our belief is that you shouldn't always be pounding the body. You know, you've got, the body's got to recover. Um, so we, we do a lot of soft tissue stuff. So when you walked in, a lot of the foam rolls, lacrosse balls, we get on that. We teach our clients how to do soft tissue work. And then the last thing we do, but probably the most important thing is a fitness fundamentals class where we're really educating our clients on the movements that we do. So whether it's a hip hinge or a squat, um, a push, a pull, that, they, that we're comfortable and they're comfortable doing these movements before we incorporate them into uh, into the, the group setting. So, um, you know, I, wor I work a lot, like Tyler said. I, I you know, I, I'm working on four hours of sleep right now, um, and it, but it's it's all good. Like this is what it's all about. My, you know, my father was an entrepreneur. He is an entrepreneur. Um, he's getting ready to sell his business that he's had for about 25 years. Um, so you ask, where does it come from? I think I, I don't know. But I think it's, it comes from, from that. It comes from, you know, growing up in that environment, seeing what, you know, him taking risks did for our, fans, uh, our family financially. You know, when, when we were in junior high together, like, I couldn't afford my PE uniform. Um, I'll never forget that. Um, and then two years later, you know, they're buying a house in Saratoga and keeping their house in Aptos. So I see what that can do for, for, for the family. And um, we have a young boy now, and my wife's pregnant with another boy. And... Um, and even though I don't see him much now, I hope that the, the decisions I'm making and the, the time I'm spending doing this is is going to benefit um, not only him but our whole fi our whole family. So um, it's exciting to me, and uh, I, I'm doing what I love. I have no complaints. Like and, uh, Nat was in here today at like 2:30, and he was crushing it, and he was sweating, and he was. But like when he's on that TV, you know, surfing at J Bay, and he's doing awesome. Like, I mean, that's him, but it's fun to be a little bit a part of that you know it's fun to have an influence on that and um and that's what we do what we do and i guess the final thing what i get most excited about is working with with young children you know having having the ability and having that impact on on their lives like um you know going through what i went through with with college you know i didn't mention it but i you know i played i played at a four-year school sat on the bench i played at a junior college and then i got a scholarship to play at a four-year school so I, i've i've experienced a lot of stuff and when kids turn to me for advice about what they should do for college like, it makes me feel good to, to, to know that they're listening to me and that they take what I say to heart, and hopefully I can be a part of that decision-making process. Like, to me, like, that's really what life's all about. Like, sure, it'd be great if we had a 1,000 members and we're making a lot of money, but um, that's not why I do what I do. I do it because I want to have a positive impact on the community that I grew up in, and, and to me, that, that, that means a lot. Tyler was the guy that surfed, and, you know, when you're little, it's like, there's surfers, there's the jocks, and there's the whatever. And I was a jock, and he was a surfer. And I didn't know anything about surfing. And to, and to be totally honest with you, I didn't know any. I didn't know until I retired, which was in 2005. I had no idea that Santa Cruz was was what it is with surfing. I had no clue. Uh, and so when I retired, it was like I know that I, I'll get to your question. I promise. Um, it was like I'm going to try this. This looks fun. And and so when I went out in the water, I was terrible at surfing because I'd never boogie boarded anything. Um, and so it was like getting involved, like meeting you guys and, and stuff like that. And so um, I've been learning about surfing. I, I feel like I know quite a bit now, you know, going through Nat's journey with him and, and seeing what Nick's about and doing what he's doing. Um, it, it's, it's different for me to answer that question. Like if you were to talk to me about a kid's success in baseball, that's very easy for me to answer. Like I, I feel very comfortable with that. But because I'm still learning surfing, I don't, it feels weird for me to take any kind of credit for any of their success. But 
Uh, the kid I coach just won like one of the biggest um, um, youth contests and it's a state contest recently, Santiago. And then another kid who coaches just won the U.S. championships, Nick Fernandez, who he coaches as well. And uh, who else? Matt Young just got runner up in Fiji, who he trains as well. So on all ages, this guy is coaching. I think what, what I think is cool about that is, and again, because I didn't grow up in the surf world, um, what I'm finding out is that, you know, what I was doing when I was 15 was just, it was commonplace. Like, if you want to play in the major leagues or play in college, you need to train. Like, that's just the way it goes. And, I, and I, what I'm finding out is surfing wasn't like that, and it's becoming that, you know, with Nick and Joel and all these guys. And, um, and that is, you know, kind of at the forefront of that as well. And that's exciting to me. Like to, to maybe even play like a little bit of a part in that, like that's really cool. And um, and again, that's kind of going back to my whole mission. Like, I I want this place and I want me and the, our staff to be a positive influence for the kids in this community. And if we can get away from what surfing was in terms of like the again uh, the drug use, I I wasn't there, but the drug use, all that stuff, and into like, hey, this is something that you can be doing and competing, and it can be a positive thing. Like, that's really cool. So yeah, that that excites me very much.